Hello, my name is Eric Craven. I'm a sales manager with Ophir Spiracon, and I represent New England and Eastern Canada. Today, we're going to discuss results from our Beam Gauge professional software. As you'll see, the results are displayed on the left side of the screen, uh, highlighted by these titles. To select the proper results for your experiment, uh, you would simply choose the title. As you'll see, it produces a drop-down menu where you can select additional result options. Uh, I'll turn a few of these on here, such as average power and peak. And as you'll see, they are populated below the power and energy uh, title. A common measurement most laser engineers want to obtain is a beam width measurement. And you can locate beam width under our spatial title. And you'll see we have a number to choose from, including uh, a knife edge or a D4 sigma. There it is here. Or a percentage of peak. I'm going to turn on two results. One is a D4 sigma, and the other would be a programmed percentage of peak. And you'll see those are populated right here under the spatial. In order to obtain a proper measurement, you're going to need to define the area of the array that the software is going to analyze. And to do that, we're going to use an aperture. We have two apertures to choose from. One is an auto aperture and the second is a manual aperture. I'll demonstrate both of them for you here. With the camera acquiring data, I will select auto aperture, and you'll see it produces this yellow aperture around the laser beam. And again, that will allow the software to define the area that, uh, or the region of interest uh, that the software will use to calculate the beam diameter width. The alternative option would be to use a manual aperture, and you'll find that under your aperture tab. And here in the manual section, I'll drop this menu down, and I'll choose a circle, because we do have a round beam. And that'll populate here in the upper left, and we'll then drag this to our laser beam, and expand it so that we capture just beyond the edge of that uh, laser beam. As you'll see, our manual aperture is shown in white. Because we're looking for a beam width, we're going to define that as a circle. And you'll see a boundary is drawn around the laser beam. And this is where the beam width is actually being measured. So it allows you to see it visually as well as get the results for that measurement. So we're interested in percentage of peak. It's programmable from 1% to 99. In this case, uh, let's choose something that's very common like 50% of peak or full width half max. To define that percentage of peak, we have to go to computations. and In the beam width tab, we'll expand that. We'll choose percentage of peak. And in this case, we'll enter 50% for the full width half max select enter and you'll see those results are immediately displayed here in real time and again at full width half max we're looking at 430 microns if you wish to choose a different unit of measure we have several options right here in that same tab in this case we've chosen microns but if millimeters is your preference you simply select that and it will automatically convert all of your spatial measurements into millimeters. Some additional options under our results tab would be, for example, uh, a Gaussian. In this case, uh, let's choose roughness of fit. We'll select that. Now, although we've selected it's not displayed, we'll have to expand that menu by clicking this plus sign. And you'll see it drops down right below. And if any time you wish to have the results displayed in the beam profile window, you simply select the result that you wish, and you can copy it to the 2D display. And as you'll see, that is populated up here in the upper left. If 
If you don't like it in that position, you can click it and drag it wherever you like. Now that we've selected our beam diameter measurement as a percentage of peak, there's some additional features available to you. Uh, as I demonstrated earlier, you can copy those results directly to your 2D display. Adding them right here. Or you could do something like uh, establish a pass-fail criteria. And to do that, we'll click this tab here. We'll select a maximum use 450 and let's do a minimum as well. We'll do 400. As you'll see the color of the result has changed from black to green. This would indicate that this beam width is within our tolerance that we just established. If it is not in tolerance it'll be displayed in red and I'll show you that here. We will change our maximum to 430. Our beam width is no longer within our tolerance and now is displayed in red. This also includes the results that we copied over to our 2D display. Some additional options in the same area would be to chart the results. Simply select charting and you'll see an additional window is open in the software which is charting the beam diameter as a function of percentage of peak, which we have selected as 50% or full width half max. Now this chart is collecting data and will run continuously. And if you wish not to look at it 100% uh, of the time, you can simply toggle back to your 2D display. If you're interested in seeing both results simultaneously, the 2D and the chart, you can simply unpark the chart, as I've done here. And I'll populate that at the bottom of our screen. So now you will have the combination of your results on the left, your 2D display immediately in front of you, and your chart running continuously uh, at the bottom of the screen. In addition to unparking the chart, you can do the same with the results. Where you could move the results tab to any portion of the screen that you're interested in, so it doesn't obstruct your view. Uh, and you can also change the size of the text chart for easier reading. You can simply change the scale and I'll go from one uh, to two for example. So this is how you use the results section of our beam gauge software. If you have any questions you're welcome to call myself or any of my colleagues at 866-755-5499 or visit us anytime on the web at www.ophiropt.com slash photonics.